So I always want to have some fun whenever I teach my classes. And let me give you guys an example. Check this out. This is actually the last question on my pre-calculus test recently. And I think some students were freaking out when they were doing this question and when they saw their answer. We'll see. The question is, we have a function 23 minus x over 1 plus 4x. And our goal is to find its inverse function. So this right here is a pretty standard pre-calculus equation. And let me just show you guys the pre-calculus way. First, we write f of x as y. So we have y equals 23 minus x over 1 plus 4x. Then we switch y to x, x to y. So x is equal to 23 minus y over 1 plus 4y. Then we will have to isolate this y. We can first multiply 1 plus 4y on both sides. This way, this and that will cancel. Then distribute this. So we get x plus 4y, well xy like this, that's equal to 23 minus y. Now we will just move this to there and then move the x here. So let me add the y on both sides like this and then minus the x like this. This and that cancel, this and that cancel. Right here we have y plus 4xy equals 23 minus x. Both of them have the y so we can factor out the y. And then we have y times 1 plus 4x equals 23 minus x. And finally, divide this on both sides, we get y equals 23 minus x over 1 plus 4x. And this y is exactly what we are trying to find, namely f inverse. And we have 23 minus x over 1 plus 4x. Yay, especially if this is last question. I will feel good about this. Really? Um, does this look familiar? Do you feel like a deja vu right now? <laughs> Notice 23 minus x over 1 plus 4x is actually the same as the original. Wow, is this possible? Did we actually do anything wrong? No, we didn't. In fact, this is possible. <laughs> the inverse is actually the same as the original in this particular case. It's possible. And whenever this happens, this is the idea of the evolution function. So it's a, probably it's not the best place to introduce this idea to the students. The last question on the test. But I did give them a practice question that has similar flavor. So if they did do the question, then they could expect this kind of things to happen. So yeah. And on that pre-calculus test that I gave out recently, I actually only used one, two, three, four for the questions and also two zeros. So that's pretty good. I do plan to make a live stream later on to go over the questions. So if you guys would like to know that, uh, leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, let's discuss how I came up with this. A um, couple ways to do it. One, you can Wikipedia this and you can see that there's a formula for it, but that's the first way. Now let's talk about the second way. All right, so here is the goal. What we can do is the following. Suppose we have a rational function. Because for the rational function, you have to go through all these computations. I think it's a fair amount of work for pre-calculus students. So let's start with f of x. And we want f of x to be a rational function in the following sense. I want a linear on the top over a linear on the bottom. So ax plus b over cx plus d. So that, and um, just like what we did earlier, the inverse is the same as the original. So we want f, um, let's see, uh, let, let, let's do this. You don't have to write down so that every single time. We want this so that f of x is equal to its inverse. But because we are trying to look for the inverse, so let's go ahead and write it on this. We want the inverse of x. We want the inverse of f. I'm too happy to talk about this right here. All right, we want the inverse of f to be the same as the original, okay? Yeah, so how in the world can we do this? Well, first we will have to assume that this is invertible, aka one to one and all that. I'll tell you it works and all that. So in this case, 
this is how you can do it. It's not the best way. I will show you guys a second way by the end of the video. So, you know, watch out for that. This right here, it's the same as saying, we want f of f of x to be just x because you can apply the original f on both sides like this. Right? So that f and f inverse will cancel and x will be f of f of x. So same thing like that. So now we have an equation to work out. f of f of x. That means we put f of x into itself. So this is f of x. We want to enter that itself. So how does that look like? This means we have f of a x plus b over c x plus d and we want this to be equal to x and let's see if we can fit in everything in this board we will put this into here and here so we want a times a x plus b over c x plus d plus b over c times a x plus b over c x plus d and then plus d and we want this to be equal to x cool to a certain degree because it's a lot of letters and our goal is to find a b c d ideally make them whole numbers so that they look fairly simple and all that and i did tell you guys that i used one two three four for this question as, as well all right so let's come back to here perhaps let's just um, multiply c x plus d on both sides so keep that in mind what we're doing we're just multiplying c x plus d on both sides here I see x plus d on both sides. Not on both sides, I mean top and bottom right here. Cx plus d. So when we take this times that, they cancel and let's distribute the little a. So we are looking at a squared x plus ab plus b times that. So it's c, no, what am I talking about? B, can first, b goes first before c. So bcx and then plus bd. And then on the bottom, this and that cancel, distribute the little c. So here we get this over acx and then plus bc plus this times that. So it's cdx plus d squared. And this is equal to x. And now multiply this on both sides. So we get a squared x plus ab plus bcx plus bx equals we get ACX squared plus BCX plus CDX squared plus D squared X. This is not a derivative. This is just some number D squared that times uh, X. And you can move everything on one side and all that up to you. Or you can now just equate coefficients. So it depends on how you want to do it. On the left hand side, we have a polynomial. And on the right hand side, we also have a polynomial. And... Um, let me just make sure that nothing is wrong. The, something is wrong, of course. This is not bx. This is b times d. b times d. And of course, this is b times d. Right? b times d. And we are good now. So here we have x squared. And this is also x squared. But on the left hand side, we don't have x squared term, right? So notice this, notice that. So from here, because we don't have x squared term, that means ac plus cd. Uh, let me just put this down here. A, C plus C, D. This has to be equal to zero. Yeah. And now if we look at the X term. So here we have the A squared term. A squared X. And this is B, C, X. Oh, B, C, X cancel on both sides. Why not? Let's just get rid of that. B, C, X. B, C, X. Gone. And we have this. So it looks like we have a square has to be equal to d square. So a square has to be equal to d square. Yeah. And then what else do we have? Mm. Lastly, here, bd, bd, this is the constant term. It has no x. And on the right hand side, everything has x. So that means ab plus bd has to be equal to 0. So here we have the three conditions from the things that we have. And uh, if you look at this, we can get rid of the C, and then this implies A is equal to negative D. A is equal to negative D. And right here it says A squared is equal to D squared, but 
this is a better condition than that, so we don't need to do this anymore, right? Because the square of that, we have to make sure that they are opposite sign. And now we have to look at B and D. We know A is equal to negative D, so we can say this is A times, let's write A as negative D right here. And then we have this B and then plus B, D equals zero. Oh, by the way, I should have said C is not equal to zero here so that we have a choice for C. That's how we can get rid of the C earlier. Because if C is equal to zero, that would be a little bit too boring. So I should have said that. Right here, I will also say, if B is not equal to zero, then we can also get rid of that and then this is also true. So it looks like we have a freedom to choose any value for C and likewise we have any freedom to choose any value for B and that will make this true. And as long as we make sure A is equal to negative D, then we are good to go. So here is how the equation will look like. Our function f of x will be equal to, let me just replace I like to use, let me just replace negative d into a. So we have negative d because a is equal to negative d and we have the x plus b. b has the freedom because we got rid of them earlier. And then c is, again, has the freedom like this and then plus d like that. Cool. So if you look at this, that's all good. But if you want to get rid of the coefficients right here, that's also okay because we have this d here and this d here. So we can divide everything by d. And again, assuming d is not equal to zero right here. Let me just put it somewhere. We want a, b, c, d to not be zero. How's that? Just keep that in mind. So this right here will give us negative x plus b over d over c over dx plus 1. And b over d, we can just label that to be another constant. Likewise, this, we can also label that to be another constant. And this is how exactly what form, no, not what form, but Wikipedia got the answer. So I will just write it like negative x plus hmm, beta, well, I will just put it as capital B over this right here is capital C x plus 1. So if f of x is in this particular form, then you can have this, f of f of x is equal to x. So this is the function that we want. And c and b can be anything. Yeah, c is equal to this, b is equal to that. I think it's pretty cool. And if you look at it, I pick c to be four, and then we have the negative x right here, and I pick b to be 23. So that's how I got that function. Yeah, but I will tell you though, this right here is not the best way to talk about the involution function because it's really computational. However though, I do think that if you want to go crazier, then maybe this is the way to go. It took me a while, right? But here's the better one. Check this out. So another way to get a rational function that's evolution, we can do the following. I will start with f of x equal to k over x. And k is just any number. Don't, don't say zero, please. And the reason for that is because if we grab that, then the picture is going to be like this. Let's say k is positive for now, then the picture will be for like this. Right, if k is greater than zero. If k is less than zero, then you have this and that instead, which is okay. It's also, symmetrical about y equals x right so technically it should be more like this and of course if you replace this with y and you see that if you switch x and y and worked out the things that we did earlier you will see that the inverse is indeed the same as the original but the idea is that this curve is symmetrical about this diagonal line y is equal to x that's why when you flip that, we still get the original. That's good. But would I mean this still be symmetrical about the diagonal line if we just move along the diagonal line? Yes. So we will start with f of x equals to k over x. And then we will move along, we'll shift along, uh, 
along the line y is equal to x meaning we can go to the left however many you sorry we can go to the right however many units and we just have to make sure we go up by the same unit or we can also move to the left however many units and then go down however many units so if this happens then we'll see this is going to give us a picture like this if I move it then I will get to somewhere here and of course this will also move diagonally so it will be something like this so this right here will still be symmetrical very good and of course we can also move down this way so if we move this then that's pretty much it well how do we move though to the right however many units and the same exact amount up so i can say uh right and up both let's say t units just some number t right so how are we going to write that expression though well we start with f of x equals that so if you want to move to the right t units that means we will have to have f of x minus t this right here tells us we move the curve to the right t units and then we also have to go up t units so make sure that we add the t afterward so this right here is exactly how we can move up and down well to the right and to the up to the right and also upward t units and that's pretty much it let's write an expression for this and perhaps i will write it down like this i will just say let our new function g of x to be that f of x minus t plus t so g of x is equal to k over x minus t and then we add t to it and right here of course we can just get a common denominator so x minus t here and also x minus t here and we will see that this right here equals x minus t on the bottom and then let's put down t plus t times x right here first and this is minus t squared and then right here we add the k afterward so these are the x terms and these are the constant terms this right here is better we use a so-called parameter this right here tells us how much we have to move both to the right and also up or left and down as long as we are moving along this line this right here is guaranteed that g inverse is equal to original can just pick whatever t that you want plugging guarantee works as well so you can let me know which way you like more and I know there are a lot more evolution functions out there, but I think this is perhaps my favorite one. And if you are a teacher as well, you can also let me know uh, what are the questions that you'd like to ask your students. And feel free to use this for your students as well though. As always, that's it.